we will talk about Edgar Deal's cone of experience. But first, who is Edgar Deal? Edgar Deal was born on April 27, 1900s in Benson, Minnesota and died on March 8, 1985. He served on the Ohio State University faculty from 1929 until 1970. He was also an internationally renowned pioneer in the utilization of audiovisual material in instruction. That's why he was called the father of modern media in education. He is an American educator who developed the cone of experience. What is the cone of experience? So this is the cone of experience and this is first introduced in Dale's 1946 book which is the audiovisual methods in teaching. This is composed of 11 stages, starting from concrete experiences at the bottom of the cone, then it becomes more and more abstract as it reaches the peak of the cone. Concrete versus abstract experiences. If you talk about concrete experiences, these are purposeful experiences that is seen, handled, tasted, touched, felt, and smelled. While abstract experiences, the verbal symbols and messages are highly abstract and they do not have a physical resemblance to the objects or ideas. In the selection and use of teaching strategies, the more senses that are involved in learning, the more and the better the learning will be. But it does not mean that concrete experience is the only effective experience that educators should use in transferring knowledge to the learner. Instead, each stages can be mixed and are interrelated Thus, a balance must be achieved between concrete and abstract experiences in order to cater and address all the need of the learner in all the domains of development and in order to help each learner in their holistic development. This tale's cone of experience was influenced by Jerome Brenner's theory of instruction, which are categorized into three levels, the inactive or the direct experiences, the iconic or the pictorial experiences, and the symbolic or the highly abstract experiences. So now, let's try to go deeper in each of the components of the cone. So, let us begin with the direct and purposeful experiences. These are first-hand experiences which serves as the foundation of learning. In this level, more senses are used in order to build up the knowledge. Also, in this level, the learner learned by doing things by him or herself. Learning happens through actual hands-on experiences. This level proves that educational technology is not limited to the modern gadgets and software that are commercially available nowadays. This shows that even the simple opportunity that you give to each child could help them learn. The next level would be the contrived experiences. In this level, Representative models and mock-ups of reality are being used in order to provide an experience that is close as reality. This level is very practical and it makes the learning experience more accessible to the learner. In this stage, it provides more concrete experiences, even if not as concrete as direct experiences, that allows a visualization that fosters a better understanding of the concept. On the other hand, the next level would be the dramatized experiences. In this level, learners can participate in a reconstructed experiences that could give them a better understanding of the event or a concept. Through dramatized experiences, learners become more familiar with the concept as they emerge themselves to the as-if situation. Stage plays depicts life, character, or culture, a combination of all three. They offer excellent opportunities to portray vividly important ideas about life. Role-playing is an unrehearsed or rehearsed, prepared or unprepared, a let's pretend situation. Unlike the regular stage plays, puppet play can present ideas with extreme simplicity without elaborate scenery or costume. The next level would be the demonstrations. It is a visualized explanation of important facts idea or process through the use of pictures, drawings, film, and other types of media in order to facilitate clear and effective learning. In this level, things are shown based on how they are done. Another level would be the study trips. This level extends the learning experience through excursions and visits on the different places that are not available inside the classroom. Through this level, the learning experience will not be limited to the classroom setting, but rather extended in a more complex environment. 
The level of study trips is followed by exhibits. It is a somewhat combination of some of the first levels in the cone. Actually, exhibits are a combination of several mock-ups and models. Most of the time, exhibits are experiences that is for your eyes only, but some exhibits include sensory experiences which could be related to direct purposeful experiences. In this level, meanings and ideas are presented to the learners in a more abstract manner. This experience allows students to see the meaning and relevance of things based on the different pictures and representations presented. The next level would be the level of educational television and motion pictures. This implies values and messages through television and films. The learners can recreate events with simplistic drama and can edit an event that create a clearer understanding than if experienced event firsthand. The next level would be audio recordings and photo. This implies that still pictures Recordings and radio are visual and auditory devices that can be used by a learner or group of learners that could enhance and extend learning experiences. The next level will be the visual symbols. This is the most complex and abstract among all the components of the cone of experience. Charts, maps, graphs, and diagrams are used for abstract representations. The last level will be the verbal symbols. This is the top most complex and abstract among all the components of the cone of experience. In this level, words, ideas, principles, formula, and the likes are used. This level does not involve visual representation or clues to their meanings. To better understand the cone of experience, let us refer to the cone of learning. It tells us that after two weeks, we tend to remember only 10% of what we read, 20% of what we hear, 30% of what we see, 50% of what we see and hear, 70% of what we say, and 90% of what we say and do. And here are the things you need to ponder. First, how do you use technology in your instruction? Second, does the use of technology enhance learning? Third, do today's technology service students require greater usage of technology than the past? And first, how can you use technology to create learning experience? As a conclusion, the cone of experience is a visual device to aid teachers in the selection of instructional media. It can be said that in facilitating learning, we can use a variety of materials and mediums in order to maximize the learning experience. Also, it could be said that concrete experiences must be provided first in order to support abstract learning. Next, staying with the concrete experiences is not even an ideal because through providing abstract experiences to the learner, the more he or she will develop her or his higher thinking order skills, which is important for a more complex way of thinking and dealing with more complex life situations. And lastly, it could be said that educational technology is not limited to modern gadgets that we have right now, but rather it is a broad concept that includes all the media that we can use to attain balance as we facilitate effective and meaningful learning. And that's it. Thank you for watching and I hope that you...